Hi guys, Chris Knight here. Thanks for joining me today. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to go over the develop module in Lightroom a little bit more in depth in terms of getting the maximum amount of information out of your raw file. This uh, methodology will work in pretty much whatever software you use to process your raw image, but today we're working in Lightroom, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, first of all, I've got this image right here, and what I'm going to do is I am going to make this a black and white image just to kind of make this an exercise in tonality. And what I want to do is I want to reach my absolute maximum amount of information from an absolute white to an absolute black. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and convert my image to black and white. You can see it's very, very flat. I've got my highlight and my, uh, my white and my black clipping turned on. I don't have any information in my whites blown out. I've got a little bit of black detail reaching pure black down here. I know I can uh, deepen that up a little bit. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start by pulling my white slider all the way to about the breaking point, which is going to be about right there. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and bring my black slider down to about right there, give me a little bit more information. So as of right now, you can kind of take a peek at the histogram and you can see that I've got a little bit of clipping in the whites and I've got a tiny little bit down there in the blacks, but my histogram, my information of my image has kind of stretched out all the way. Now, also for me, and this is more of a personal choice, I want to kind of take this a little bit darker, something a little bit more uh, in the Ansel Adams realm of processing where we've got a significant amount of information in both the highlight and the shadow detail. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my exposure down pretty considerably. Now, I know this may seem a little bit dark for now, but I know I'm going to have a lot of rich tones in here to really bring out. And I'm going to go ahead and start by cranking uh, my shadows up pretty considerably. About right there. And then I'm going to bring my uh, highlights down just a tad more. Now essentially what I'm doing is I'm really compress or I'm, I'm, I'm really expanding the tonal range of both the shadows and the highlights to a massive degree. It happens to work a little bit more on an image like this than it would on say a typical portrait. And then I think for posterity's sake I'm going to go ahead and move the contrast up just a little bit as well. Alright, so now I'm kind of creating something that's a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more interesting. By pressing the Y key I can compare uh, back and forth to my original image and I'm starting to get a little bit happier with the result. I'm also going to go ahead and turn my clarity up a little bit, which is going to increase the mid-tone contrast of my image. All right, and now I'm going to come down here to my black and white mix just to finally tweak some uh, final details. I'm going to bring my reds up, my oranges up as well, and I also know that I've got a little bit of information in the blues, which is the sky, and I know I can bring that down a little bit too. So, when I turn this off, I've got a much more dynamic image. My, uh, I've got a significant amount of information, both my shadows and my highlights. And this is a little bit dark for print, so what I would probably do is I would boost it up a little bit more, um, just in terms of printing, but I think this will be just fine for the web use. So that's it um, for the black and white we can just as easily convert it back to color. You can see it's a little bit too saturated, so what we would probably do here, at least for me, is I would dial down that saturation just a tad. And then I would probably come down here to my HSL sliders, and I could tweak those a little bit more as well in terms of the luminance and the saturation, at least bringing that down a bit more. And there we are. We've got a nice dynamic image in both color and black and white. So there you go. Just a quick little exercise, a little refresher course in the developing module. And uh, thanks for watching.